All right, so in this video, we'll be making our first game character all in Blender 3D. This will be a fairly low poly model. However, you'll learn plenty of techniques through this uh, series of tutorials. So what we can do is start off by adding in our reference images. Reference images are really useful for having a guideline for what we're trying to build. So we can add them in by pressing Shift A, add in a image and reference. Uh, by the way, these uh, images that you see here will be available for you to download. So, um, yeah. Uh, so once I've had added in my reference image, what I can do is, well, first of all, let me delete the default cube because that's in the way. And then I can right click on my re reference image here. And then we can position it by pressing Alt R to clear it of rotation. And then I can press R, X and 90, just so that we have our uh, image in the front view. And then also having a side view image is also extremely useful when creating our character, just so that we have different angles to build our model from. So I can press shift A and add in a reference once again and click on my side reference. So once again, I'll just need to reposition it by pressing Alt R and then I will press R X 90. And then since it's the side view and we'll be viewing it from this uh, angle here, I'll press R Z 90 like so. So now we have our front and we have our side view. So that's all the setup for the reference image done. So I can press G and X to move the side reference image uh, back on the X axis. And then I can press G and Y to move the front one uh, away, I guess, out of the way. So we can begin creating our model by using a default cube. So I can press Shift A at a mesh and default cube this will be the base of, basis of our model. And I think we will start off by using the default cube to create the torso of our game character. It's a knight, by the way, if you didn't know. Um, so I will scale it down like so. And what's going to be extremely useful for when we are building our model is to use a mirror modifier. This is so that we only need to work on one side of the model while Blender will mirror the, uh, the side that we're working on so that uh, we don't have to work on both sides. Probably sounded extremely clunky, but it's honestly a very simple modifier. So what we can do is tab into edit mode like so, press Control R to add in an edge loop, and this gives our halfway point. So once we add in our edge loop, we can press Z for wireframe mode, so that we can select all of the vertices uh, on the left-hand side here. So I will hold down my left mouse button, and then press X, delete vertices. After I've done that, I can go to the modifiers tab here, go to add modifier. And then under the generate column, we have mirror modifier. So now if I select a vertex here, you can see that it is mirrored on the left hand side as well. So I'll just press control Z a few times. And then um, one thing that we will need to enable is clipping. So clipping is currently off. And um, to demonstrate what clipping does, what I can do is press A to select all, and then press G to move around. And as you can see, our objects separate into two pieces um, and they're not joined together. So this is, this is what happens when clipping is not enabled. However, with clipping enabled, you can see that the middle vertices don't come apart. So that's what we want. And you'll need to make sure that we have clipping enabled for the, uh, for the rest of this tutorial, I guess. So what we can do is start building out our model. But uh, before we get started, I noticed that um, the reference image isn't exactly aligned in the center. So our ref our default cube is in the center, but our reference image isn't. So I can just go into object mode by pressing tab. So we can move over our reference image by selecting it like so, and then pressing G and X, and then holding down the shift button to slow down our movement until our reference image is a bit more centered like so. Then I can go back to my default cube, go back into edit mode and start building out the body of our of our character. But again, before I do that, what we can do is add in a subdivision surface modifier, which will add a bit more detail to our to our cube. So I can go to add modifiers and subdivision surface and we can leave it at a level one for now. So if I go into front view, 
And by the way, if I haven't said, you can use your tilde key or your numpad to select your different views. So since I don't have a numpad, I use my tilde key, which is above the tab key. And I can go to right, front, top, and any other view that I want. Anyway, to continue, what I can do is uh, go into, well, I'm already into X-ray mode, so I can box select these vertices here. And then I can press E to extrude and bring it up like so. I'll go into solid view just to see what I'm doing a bit better. And then I can press Alt Z like so. I'll box select these bottom vertices like so. And then press E to extrude and then G to pull it out on the X axis. So G and X. And then I'll make sure that uh, everything's selected at the back. Do the same for here, G and X. And I'll guess I'll pull these ones out as well, G and X, just so that we have a wider looking character. I'll go into right view like so, just because it's good to be flicking back and forth between the front and the side view, just to ensure that our model is looking good from all angles. I will press G and Y to bring back on the Y axis like so. And as you can see, we have a very basic looking body. Nothing impressive, but it's a start. So go back into other mode, press G and Z. And what I can do is apply my mirror modifiers just so that we have more geometry to work with. So what I can do is press Control A to apply my mirror modifier. And then I'll press Control A to apply my subdivision surface modifier. Or conversely, you can click this tab here and press apply. Then we can add in our mirror modifier once again. So let's just delete half of our uh, vertices here. Add modifier. Add in the mirror modifier once again. And then make sure to enable clipping. I'll go into right view and continue doing some positioning by selecting these faces here, pressing G and Z to grab it up like so. And then this area here can be the uh, beginning of the shoulders. So I can select here, press G and Z to bring down a tiny bit. And then we can start forming the arm holes of, uh, of our model. So what I can do is select this, these vertex here. So this one, shift click and shift click press g and z to bring down um i can leave uh, these ones here as is but i can bring this one down by pressing g and z or even better what i can do is press g twice which enables edge slide mode to quickly show you what edge slide mode is is um if i wanted to move this edge along or if i wanted to move this vertex along this edge here um if I press G, it just moves anywhere in 3D space. But if I press G twice, you can see it's sliding along the um, the edge. And this is better for our model as it preserves the natural topology that we already have. So that's why we use edge slide in many cases. So uh, what I can do is go to right view, go back into wireframe mode or x-ray mode, whichever you prefer. Press G twice to enable edge slide. And sometimes it's okay if you want to press G to manually position things. So I'll select this edge here or vertex here, keep mixing them up. And then, um, so then we have this um, octagonal, I think eight sided shape here with a, a single vertex in the center. And this will be the, um, our armhole. And what we can do is select these faces here. So one, two, three, four, and then press I to inset so that we have uh, some more faces in the middle here. And then I can just press G and X to pull them inwards like so. Uh, what we can actually do is press M to merge and we can merge all of the faces to a point at the center like so. All right, so, whoops. So make sure to save and then we can continue. And then we can select these four faces here, press I to inset like so. And then we can press I to inset again, but this time with all four faces selected, we can press M and merge at center just so that we have um, all of the faces converging to one and then I can press G 
and Y, nope, X, G and X to bring it inwards like so, just so that we have the, uh, the arm sockets of our armor. And then what I forgot to do earlier is delete these bottom faces here as this is a tunic of sorts or um, yeah, a, a battle armor. I'm not sure what the technical term is. So we can delete these bottom faces here. And this is where the legs of our character will start to poke out. So what I can do is, um, is just select these edges here by alt clicking and then press S and Z to scale on the Z axis just so it's flatter. And then maybe press S to scale it outwards. And as you can see in the reference image, the, uh, the sides of our armor come down a little bit. So I can select this edge here and this edge and maybe uh, these here as well. And then press E to extrude and we can bring them down to about here. So we have the basic shape of our tunic and what I can do is add in another subdivision surface modifier. This time using a shortcut by pressing control one to add in a level one subdivision surface modifier. So after doing this, we can move on to creating the legs, which is one of my favorite parts, just because of how simplistic it is and how, um, how much it adds to the model. So we can add in another object by pressing shift A and adding in a cube. And then we can scale it down like so. I'll move it down here. And what we can do to have two cubes or two legs being modeled at the same time is add in a mirror modifier. So I can add modifier, select mirror, and you won't be able to see it unless we're in edit mode and we press G to grab and move it. However, we can change the mirror object to our um, cube here or our torso. So we can start editing our boots by tabbing into edit mode like so. And then I will go into X-ray mode by pressing Alt Z, select these faces here, and then press S to scale and G to bring it up to about here. And then what I can do is press E to extrude downwards and bring it down here. Once again, we don't have to follow the reference image exactly. In fact, we shouldn't since um, it's always better to use your own intuition of what looks right. So I will press E to extrude to bring the feet forwards. And I will select this face here and press S to scale a little bit more like so. And then to add some thickness to, or some width, I guess, to the bottom of this boot here, I can actually alt click this, uh, this ring here and then press S and X just so that we have more thickness. And then to have a bit of a, uh, bit of a slant to our boots, we can press G and Z after selecting this edge like so, and then maybe S and X to bring it in. And there we go, some very basic, very low poly boots, which we can add higher detail to by selecting our muzzle like so. And then adding in a subdivision surface modifier by pressing control and two. So now it looks like a very uh, soft and ugly looking boot, but we can uh, help rectify that by starting at the top. I'll press I to inset. And that already gives that um, sharpness to the top of our boot and then i'll actually press e to extrude downwards just so that we have more of a um more of well we have the the part where our feet goes in i guess um actually what i'm going to do just so that the uh the edge around the boots is a bit thicker is i won't undo it i will uh, disable my subdivision surface modifier temporarily by pressing this tv icon and then alt click this uh, edge ring here and this face here, to click the TV icon once more, and then press S, Shift Z, and scale it in like so. So that scales on everything but the Z axis. And then I will select this face, press S, to, press S to scale, and I'll go into right view, Alt Z to enable wireframe mode, just so I can see everything. And then I will press G and bring it down like so. So we have the, uh, the very basic shape to our boots and to add some more width, which is lost when we use the subdivision surface modifier, I can alt click this edge here and press S to scale out once again. 